Thank you all very much, Mr. Council. Are we ready to resume our proceedings? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, all. Yes, we are ready to proceed. Thank you. Yes. Could you kindly bring in the witness, please? I am Samendi. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. But, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Kindly take a seat, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Mendy. Afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Esafal. We have already met on several occasions. Yes. Um, I would be leading you uh, this afternoon as you give your testimony to the commission. Yes. You understand? Yes, sir. Um, so in case you do not understand a question that I ask, please ask for clarification. Yes, uh, you have just taken the oath. I just wish to remind you uh, that it is a criminal offense to lie on the oath. It's also a criminal offense under the TRRC Act for a witness to lie before the commission. You understand? Yes, sir. Uh, I am not suggesting that you are going to lie, but this is a warning that we would give to most witnesses who would testify to uh, rights violations in which uh, they have been somewhat involved, either directly or indirectly. You understand? Yes, sir. Um, are you ready to give your testimony? Yes, sir. Uh, please, uh, perhaps you may draw the microphone a little bit closer to you um, and, and speak up so that we can hear you clearly. All right, sir. Thank you. Um, uh, what are your full names? My name is Ensa Mendy. It is Ensa with an N, correct? Y Ensa, E-N-S-A, Ensa Mendy, correct? Y yes, sir. What is your date of birth? Uh, it's 25 December 1969. Where were you born? Brikamata. Where did you attend primary schooling? I became a primary school. And sir, kindly allow for three seconds between our speeches. Okay. Uh, so that we won't overlap. All right. Um, do you recall when you completed primary school? Yes, sir. Uh, when was that? 1984. And what did you do after primary school? I went to Birkama Secondary Technical School. When did you complete Birkama Secondary Technical School? 1988. What did you do after completing secondary school in 1988? In 1988, I went for in-service teacher's course with the Roman Catholic Church. Uh -huh. And what did you do after that? And I was employed as an uh, unqualified teacher for uh, two years. And what did you do in 1990 after completing uh, that exercise, that teaching job? 
After that, I went to army selection. Uh, which army was that? Gambia National Army. And were you in fact selected? Yes, I was selected. Uh, I noticed that you had previously drawn your mic closer to you, but for some technical reason it was pushed a little bit further away from you. Uh, yes, sir. But I also noticed that you are leaning in, so that would be a bit tedious. So to relax and just give your testimony. If for some reason we could not hear you, we, we, we would make adjustments, all right? All right, sir. Uh, thank you very much. So you were selected in 1990 uh, to join the Gambia National Army. Yes, sir. Uh, where did you do your training, sir? At Farafenye Military Barracks. Do you recall when you finished your training? Um, we started training on the 7th uh, May 1990 for a period of six months. So you finished your training in December 1990 or November 1990, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, where did you go after you finished your training? After finishing training, we had we went to, they deployed us to Yendom Barracks. And uh, in which company were you deployed to in Yendom Barracks? Delta Company. And uh, who was your company commander? The company commander was Major Bapar Jata. In 1994, uh, say August 1994, where were you deployed? I was deployed to the Ministry of Local Government and Labs as the only to Minister Yankuba Ture. I, I missed something that you said. As only to who? Yankuba Ture. Uh, what was Yankuba Ture at this time? He was the Minister for Local Government and Lands. Uh, was he part of the army or not at this time? Yes, sir. And what was his rank? He was a lieutenant. And, uh, and uh, he was uh, He was a Minister for Local Government. In, which, in whose government was that? AFPRC government. Um, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, sometimes answers to questions we ask are so obvious, but you are the witness testifying, so we just have to ask them. Uh, thank you very much for understanding. So in 1994, August, uh, you were an orderly for Mr. Yankuba Ture. That's what you said. Uh, yes, how did you come to become his orderly? I could recall back, um, in August, we are on a parade. We are on a parade, in the parade ground, and a call came from Army headquarters requesting for me to go uh, to answer to the CEO. The CEO was Lieutenant Barrow. So, um, Lieutenant C was addressing us on parade and then he suddenly stopped because somebody came there, talked to him, then he suddenly stopped and called me, said, Mendy, come out. Then I came out, he told me that follow me, then I followed him. So I went to the CEO's office, uh, who is uh, Lieutenant uh, Barrow. So there I which, met... Which Lieutenant Barrow is that? Do you know his first name? Basiru Barrow. So there I met uh, uh, Captain Baji. I met Major Jata. Uh, which Captain Baji Sankare, was this? Sankare. Sankare Baji. Yes, sir. Uh, what position does he hold at the moment, if you know? At the moment, uh, he is the military advisor. To who? To the president. You also met Major Jata? Yes, sir.
And who, who, who was this Major Jata, or who is this Major Jata? Um, he was a former Army, uh, Army Chief of Staff. What's his full first name? Um, I can't remember that. Uh, would the name Babukar Jata ring a bell? I'm sure, yeah. Babukar, Babukar, yeah. But uh, he became Army Commander, or was Army Commander at the time? He, he was Army Commander. Good. So what did they say to you? Um, they told me to sit down. I, I sat down. And uh, Lieutenant Basiru Baro told me, we are the one who called you. I said, oh, yes, sir. He told me, well, we know you very well. You are hardworking, uh, decent, and uh, disciplined. So we would like to take you to Yankuboture as his orderly. So the advice we are going to give you is that when you go there, you maintain the same discipline there. And I said, yes, sir. So from there, uh, I and Bakwa uh, Jata uh, and Captain Baji boarded a vehicle. We went to the Army headquarters. We had the issue with three pairs of uniform with the barracks and boots. So Bakwa Jata stopped there. Then the Captain Baji took me to Yankubotu's office at the Ministry of Local Government and Land. And that is how you started being yeah. Yankuba tourist orderly. Yeah, he handed me there. And then I met one, there were two orderlies there. So they took Nua Sanya. He was a military police officer. Then they returned him back to the military police. And then I replaced him there. Were, were you the only orderly for Mr. Ture? No, sir. Who was the other orderly or orderlies? I met uh, Jali Musa So. He is the senior only there. He was the only one? Yes. So how many orderlies did Mr. Ture have when you served him? Only two at a time. That makes yourself and Jali Musaso. Yes, we work in shift. So um, what did your work as an orderly entail? Um, as an orderly, his security is our priority, is number one concern. We take care of um, military, his military kits. That is the, the uniform, the shoes, and so on. And uh, also in the office, we are the one who is in charge of taking in and out the files that are supposed to go to him. When he sign it, then we take it to the secretary. Would you accompany him to functions or places he went to? Sometimes. What do you mean by sometimes? Uh, sometimes we go with him, sometimes he goes alone. Is that normal protocol that he would go alone? Well, um, it is not normal, but we cannot take any decision above him. Do you recall 10th of November, 1994? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell us how you spent your day to the, on that, uh, the 10th of November, 1994? Uh, on the 10th of November, 1994, earlier was in the morning when we went to office. Um, there was a rumors that there was a military coup plan within the office. Was, I was the only military officer in that department, so I had the rumors. And um, we were just there discussing about it with the other civilians there. Then the, we are there till in the afternoon, um, around 4 to 3. Um, Yanko Bature uh, rang the bell called me, told me, let's go to the state house. So I went, I picked up his uh, baggage, the bags, then we went to the state house. And when we went to the state house, 
I stayed with the security uh, at the, where they used to stay. I stayed there and then Yankumbo climbed up to the president's office, the chairman's office. So then I was discussing with uh, some of the soldiers I met there. They told me, well, um, there is a rumor that the coup, coup plan is going on. But um, uh, Edward Singate and uh, Saadi Bohedra and Sandra Sabah, they went to Union Barracks to talk to the men. And during that period, do you know, you said Sana, uh, Yankuba Ture went upstairs. Do you know who he went to? He went to meet the chairman. As far as you know, how long did he stay with the chairman? Um, they stayed there for a long time because, because it was dark. So when he came out the chairman's office, it was dark? Yes, sir. So it was already in the evening when he came out the chairman's office? Yes, sir. So And you went there after 4 o'clock or thereabout? It's immediately after working hours. Uh, so would that be 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock? Uh, it's between after 4 to 5. Good. And the time you left there, was it already dusk? Was It's already dark? Yes, sir. All right. So that would be around 7.38? 7, 7 towards 8. Good. So where did you go after that? We went home straight. And, uh, uh, did anything else happen later that day, that evening? Yes, sir. When we reached home. Yes, sir. Can you tell us what happened and develop it chron chronologically? Yes. Um, when we reached home, we took our lunch. Then from there, Yagoba Ture called me, said, Mendy, can you please tell the guard commander to give me some men? Uh, the then guard commander was Corporal Mbo. So I went there. I told him what uh, Yankuba said. Then uh, he gave me one of the soldiers, that is uh, Wasakamara. He was a private soldier by then, but now after he was a uh, captain. And so, but he was sick. So when I, I, I told was, uh, Wasakamara to wake up and go, he told him, but I'm sick, I'm <coughs> so shivering. Then I went back told Yang Kubatula, well, the guard commander gave me some, a soldier whom you know that he is not feeling well. Then that was the time he told me, go back and tell him to come and join me. Uh, who told you that? Yang Kuba, the guard commander himself, with uh, some men to join Let's him. not confuse uh, who's who. Who told you to go and tell him to come? Yang Kubatula told me to go back and tell the guard commander to, himself to join us. Uh, and that guard commander was uh, Corporal Mbo. Mbo. You okay. And what happened after that? Uh, they joined us. Then we boarded a vehicle to State House. How many of you? Um, uh, the number I can remember, those, there are three plus me, four, and Yanko Bature, five. Uh, we know Yanko Bature. We know yourself. We know Mbo. Who are the other two? Um, I cannot remember them. Did the driver count among the five? No, no. So it was five of you plus the driver to make six? Yes, sir. Who was the driver at this time? Um, the driver was, uh, I think, is Lamin Ndur. So you don't recall who the other so two soldiers were? Yes, sir. So tell us, uh, what time did you leave Yankuba's house to go to State House? I think it's around, uh, it's around nine, towards nine, nine of what? Uh, in the evening, of course. Yes, sir. So tell us what happened when you arrived at State House. Um, when we arrived at State House, we met some uh, soldiers on parade. And... Uh, Yankubu Ture went up to uh, the chairman's. How many soldiers did you find there? 
who yes, were on quite, the parade? Quite, quite a number of them. Could you give us an estimate? Um, a sort of a platoon. Which would be about, about 14, 20, 15? 28, 30, and so that, that would be a platoon. A platoon. Yes, sir. Uh, 28, 30. 30, sir. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That includes yourself, right? They, they, and then uh, we are the Almamo told us to go and join them. So we Which Almamo are you referring Almamo to? Almamo Mane. Uh, what was his rank at the time? Well, I think he was a, a staff sergeant. So he asked you to join the, the parade? Yes. And what did Young Kuba Ture do? Young Kuba went up to the chairman. To the chairman's office. Good. So tell us what happened at that parade. At that parade, um, Almamo went and opened. There was a container there. Then he opened the container then started issuing us with, um, with, with weapons. What uh, type of weapons were these? Yes, uh, we normally we call it as RP, uh, RPG, uh, no, rocket, uh, rocket prepared uh, grenade. Yeah. Were, were these used arms or, or what? Uh, it's a new one, bright new one. Brand new arms? Made in 1994, yes. Made in 1994. How did you know that? It's there. It's you there. The you checked it? The level is you there. inspected it? Yes, sir. That's right. So you are issued with brand new arms, yes. record propelled grenades, 1994 Plus edition. Uh, hmm? Grenade belts. Some some are issued with grenade belts. Grenade belts. Uh, were these the first? Had you seen these arms before? Well, I haven't seen such. The ones I've shown in Liberia is different from this one. This one is uh, one of the smallest caliber. But I don't see this type of deformation. You've never seen them before? Never. That would be the first time they were used? Yes, sir. Taken out of a container from State House? Yes, sir. Issued to you by Alma Momane? Yes, sir. Member, member of which unit at the time? He was in the State Guard. State Guard. But these weapons were not available in the camp? Never. So, all of you... Were you, all of you given weapons, new weapons? Um, I, because when we, we were lining up, they, he was just throwing it to us. So I presume that all of us had. Uh, what happened to the weapons that you came with? For me, I was issued with a pistol. So the pistol I was using. So you kept the pistol? Yeah, by my side, the pistol is with me. And you also had an RPG? Yes, sir. Uh, with grenades. Yeah. How many grenades did you have? Uh, I cannot count for the belt. I don't. I don't count it for the belt. These were the two weapons you had. Yes, sir. But this AK-47, uh, does it have? Was it just sim RPG or was it a cross? Uh, it's AK at the same time at the bottom. That's where you can put your grenade there. Yeah. So, so, so this was a dual-use, multi-purpose weapon. Yes, sir. So it was a regular AK-47. Yes, sir. But it also had an RPG facility mounted on it. It's a new modification, yes, sir. Yes. So um, this was the first time you saw this weapon? Yes, sir. Uh, what happened to those of you who also came with AK-47s? They now would have to... to big rifles. Uh, what did they do with, the, with, with those rifles? Uh, uh, I, I cannot tell what uh, did they use, where they kept it, I cannot tell. Okay, so when you were uh, issued with these weapons, what happened next? Um, during the process of issuing us with these weapons, I was trying to question but Almamo told us to shut up and keep quiet. Yes. What were you questioning? Uh, the reason for issuing us with these new weapons. So after issuing the weapon, then that's the time he was. He started briefing us. What did he say? Um, he told us that there is a military coup plan that is about to take place.
that night. And um, he said, according to their intelligent work, these people are supposed to meet uh, at the Yindom Barracks at 2 o'clock. So what we need is uh, we should go there before them and counter them. Yes, sir. Uh, at around what time was this? Um, I could say it's around 11, 11. Uh, the council members, did you see them again after that briefing? After the briefing, we were there. Then they came down. Then we boarded the vehicles. Did the council members say anything to you as far as you can recall? No, 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 no sir. Did you personally see uh, Jame that evening? That night? No, sir. You did not see him? No, sir. Uh, we have received testimony. Yes, sir. That Yaya Jame wanted to go. And he told the council members in the presence of the men that he wanted to go. And Sanasabali told him that, no, if you trust us, you stay behind. We would go and we would succeed. I and Yaya Jame said, Bilai Walai Talai, if I go, some families would weep tonight. Did you witness that? I'm not aware of that. Okay. So you all, about 30 men, plus the council members, you boarded the vehicles and departed, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell us whether there were other senior members of the army who were not also members of the council? Well, um, when we reached at Banyolde, we stopped there. So we met, um, we met some people there, uh, some soldiers there. So I, I think uh, Captain Singat Junior, I think he was he joined us. Do you know his name? His first name? Um, Peter Peter Singat. He, you saw him there. I saw him there. That's that's the, where I saw him. But I don't know actual place where he joined us. Whether he's there. Or, at Banjulunding, did you have any discussion? Um, the place I mean, Banjul, is between uh, Tabakoto and the that's uh, back way leading to the training school. There is a nursing school on the left side, and that's that's where the, we were. We stopped there. This, they were discussing there. Yeah. And tell us what was discussed or what was said. No, we are. We I didn't go. Be, towards them because they are only the officers whom you know they were standing there discussing. Who were these officers? The council members. Could you name them please? I is Edward Singate, Yankobo Ture, Sadibu Hedra and Sana Sabeli and uh, Peter. Did they brief you about what to do or what was to happen? Never. The only the briefing that we have was with uh, Alma Mamani. So what happened after that? We departed towards uh, Indo Barracks through uh, police training school. So on the way, we met uh, one soldier. He was running. He was? He was running, coming towards us. So he was stopped. They were questioning him what is going on in the barracks there. Sam uh, Sabal was questioning him. Yeah. Yes. So, but I didn't uh, hear what they were discussing with the, uh, with the team. Because the moment we stood, we have to take cover to protect that environment. So after that, then we went. Uh, went. What happened to this soldier? Um, at that place, I don't know what happened to him. Then. So you proceeded to where? In Dom Barracks. Tell us what happened and give us the details. This is important. Yes, sir. As we approach Yundum uh, Barracks through the back gate, we are the civil, uh, uh, civilian military's wives stay at the back way. We enter through that. We went straight to the camp. Um, we occupy this, uh, all the guard posts. Soldiers uh, vacated their place. They ran away, leave their weapons, 
they are they are dinner i think they were taking dinner in fact food because i i saw many foods they are they are these plates and so on so we don't meet any resistance there was there any shooting at all um at that period there was no shooting subsequently and after there was uh, shooting around the gate so i couldn't tell because it was dark so mm. but inside the barracks there, there was no shooting so you went in you occupied the barracks yes sir uh, which part of the barracks were you uh when we occupied the barracks um the council members they went aside sit at we are just some distance away from the guard room. That place is dark. They take over, and then the other soldiers we are on, in the guard room, occupying the guard room with Malafi Corps. Who was Malafi Corps? Um, he was in the military police, and then from there he was in the state guard. At that time, he was working as a state guard. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know his rank at the time? Um, the rank I remember was a corporal. How about, uh, you said the orderlies, the, the council members were around the guard room. How about their orderlies? What I mean is the council members, we, uh, they, they went a distance away from the guard room. Yes. And that is a dark place. We are with them. You were with them, yes. tagging behind. Yes, sir. Uh, do you know what they discussed? Um, no, no. I don't know. Because we always give them a distance a bit. You did not hear anything they said? No, 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 sir. What happened afterwards? So we were there um, till around 1 o'clock. And then uh, we had a vehicle coming. So the vehicle came, it's a Land Rover. Then that's, the soldier dropped out. I had uh, Malafi, Malafi Kaur saying, Ahua. And then uh, the one who boarded the vehicle said, Ahua. Then I recognized the voice. That is the voice of Lieutenant Basiru Baro. What does Ahua mean in plain um, English? It's a military uh terms that means that they are ready for any action so when malavi Kor said ahua then left Baro said ahua let's go and fuck those bastards that was the word that baro has uttered what happened after that and from there um Malafi Kor and the other team they just captured him when they caught him he said, la, 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 Muhammad Rasulullah. That was the time they strip him, take the jujus out from him, and then the council members woke up, and Yanko Botuwe rushed upon him, but he couldn't make it. He fell down. He too fainted. So we were trying to remove the jujus from from young boy to they say it's Juju that he fell down. What was he rushing to do? That was the time they captured Baro. You, you, uh, no. Let's try to, uh, we want to understand why Yanku Bature was rushing at Baro. Uh, you said Baro was captured, he was stripped, uh, his Juju removed, and Yanku Bature rushed at him. Yes, sir. So, what was he rushing to do? Well, I couldn't tell about that. Can you show us by demonstration how young Kuba rushed at him? Let's imagine that this, this pillar in the middle is where Barrow was standing. And uh, he was, of course, restrained. How did young Kuba rush at him? Uh, don't scare us. Just show us by demonstration. You know, we were a distance. Was just rushing like this. Come here. Come here. 
Go back to the microphone, please. Uh, kindly repeat what you said in the microphone so that it will be recorded. So yes, um, what I said is that when Barrow was uh, captured, they were removing uh, Jujus from him. Then Yanguba Ture rushed upon him, but he couldn't make it. Was he attacking Barrow or was he not attacking Barrow? Well, because uh, Barrow was, uh, soldiers were just uh, around him. So Yankuba II was coming. So I don't know his intention. And Did it appear to, to you that he was attacking Barrow? That seems that he was trying to attack. He fell down? He fell down. And it was suggested that it was because of the judges. The judges. So we were trying to remove it again from him. Did he come to? Did he recover? Yes, uh, after... Uh, Sarah Sabali ordered um, Baro to, uh, uh, Malefico to take Baro to the shelves. Did anything happen to Baro that time? Um, I'm not aware of that at that time. Uh, Mr. Witness, you are under oath? Yes, sir. Uh, speak the truth. The evidence we have yes, sir. is that Baro was beaten there and he was beaten seriously. What I saw was the time they were stripping him. What happened when they were stripping him? That stripping, they were scrambling at him, removing all things. So it could be in that process they can beat him. I don't understand. I said okay? through that process, maybe he is beaten. You said maybe he was beaten. Because what they told me that they were taking uh, judges from him. I saw them removing, said, let, let, take Jujus from him. So, after they ordered them to take him to the... No, no, no. Don't, don't rush okay. the evidence. They take it step by step. To put it in local parlance, just tell exactly how it happened step by step. You understand? Sir, yes, sir. Was he beaten or was he not beaten? That's what I'm saying. He could be beaten there during the process of taking the judges. If he uh, maybe he's trying to resist. There are maybes, a lot of maybes, three maybes you have used. We want to know what is the truth, what happened. It is not clear to me whether he is beaten. Uh, Mr. Witness, you are standing there. Uh, you were with, with the council members. The time we approached uh, uh, him, that was the time Yanko Ture was rushing to him. Then we followed him. Uh, the, the evidence is that Mr. Barrow was so mercilessly beaten, he sustained so much injuries. Uh, yes. you are, he, couldn't, he could barely walk by himself. But you could not see that he was beaten. Sir, so, um... Because that time, uh, the council members said that there should be no noise because these people started coming. So Barrow was taken to the cells. Then from, I don't know whether after that he was beaten in the cells or it can be possible that he was beaten in the cells. The testimony, the evidence is he was beaten when he was captured. Um, uh, what I mean is, during the process of taking the judges from him, they were scrambling at him. What do you mean by they were scrambling at him? That's what we need to understand. What does that entail? Uh, what I mean, there was a group of many soldiers attack him there at that moment. Was he hit? Yeah, possibly he was hit. You were still in the realm of possibilities. Uh, let's come to the realm of reality. Was he hit? Yes, sir, he said. Was he butt struck? With a rifle? Yes. 
Well, uh, you see, it is dark, so anyone can use any weapon to do it. Is this a situation where you don't want to testify so want about to test a blatant violation of the person's rights? Is that the case? You don't want to see no evil. Is that it? No, 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 sir. That is not the case. He can be, if, if at all I happen to, show, uh, to see him f physically like this, when he is beaten, he is butt-trucked, I will know. But you have just accepted that he was hit. Yes, sir. Was he butt-struck? That's why I didn't see that with my eye. Was he kicked? Yes, sir. Essentially, he was beaten. To frame it, he was beaten. Why didn't you accept in the first instance that he was beaten? Um, because, you know, the people were scrambling upon him. So what I saw was they were removing... Uh, is that the reason why you did not say in the first place that he was beaten? Yes, sir. I take it you did not want to answer the question in the first instance? Not that, sir. I'll move on. i leave it at that. We accept he was beaten. Yes, sir. How badly? All other witnesses said he was beaten mercilessly. In your case, what do you say? After that process, I did not see him facially. No, we are talking about this same process. Yes. Let's, go to, let's not go to the other processes. This particular instance, what happened? Was he mercilessly beaten or not? not written on the ceiling i am thinking so my mind has gone back to the real day it's what i'm focusing on so that i can recall my mind then I'll be able to answer your question tell us sir. you've been interviewed several times yes sir and all during all this period you've been casting your mind to what has happened yes sir tell us the truth Remember, it's only the truth that shall set you free. Yes, sir. Was he beaten mercilessly? He is beaten. I want the qualification. Was he beaten mercilessly or not? Yes, sir. He was beaten mercilessly. Good. Uh, now, after he was beaten mercilessly, he was taken to the cells. That's what you say? Yes, sir. Uh, and what happened after that? After that, we stayed there for some hours. And Sanad uh, told our senior NCOs to, uh, to leave uh, Indom Barracks and then proceed to Fajara Barracks. Uh, let's not get to Fajara Barracks yet. Yes, sir. From your testimony so far, one person was arrested. We want to know what happened at Yindom Barracks. One person was arrested. Lieutenant Basiru Baro? Yes, sir. That's what you testified to? Yes, sir. Who else? What happened to the others? The others... Uh, he was the one who was arrested. And... Um, uh, Elef uh, Jame, I think Elef Jame and Sir Jackal, and I don't, I, I forgot the other team. That's where I said there was firing at the gate. That's, that, that was the time they tried to enter the barracks, and they're trying to escape, they fired them. Apart from Barrow, was anybody else arrested? at Yunnum Barracks that time? Yes, sir. Who was that? Dr. Uh, Fall. Why didn't you tell us that before? Uh, yeah, yesterday I went home, I think about it. I think all the procedure that I came to realize that no, it was... We were saying just two minutes ago, I asked you after Barrow, what else happened? You said you went to Fajara Barracks. Yeah, Why my, didn't you my, tell my, us? Skip, skip, skip it. 
No skipping anymore. All right, sir. Let's just follow the chronology and bring out the evidence. And what happened to Dotfal? Tell us. Dotfal was arrested well be just before reaching the the first sentry box, sentry post, the last sentry post to the barracks. And tell us what happened. Um, they were they were beating him. He was beaten. Who beat him? Um, the soldiers, whom you know, they are positioned uh, at that place, at the area that night. The evidence we have yes, is sir. that the soldiers who were positioned wouldn't be leaving their positions, would they? Yes, sir. At the, at the, at the site of the guard post there. So the soldiers who could move are those who could move with the council members, isn't it? Those people, they are the first entrance. No. Those who were posted at particular positions, the, you just agreed that they wouldn't leave their positions, correct? Um, what I say is that they can leave their position if there is a threat. But that file came in. He didn't enter. Okay. He didn't enter. He was apprehended. Yes, sir. Okay. So by the fact that he was apprehended, the threat was neutralized, wasn't it? Yes, sir. So there was no longer any threat coming from that file, correct? When they apprehended, apprehended him? Yes. No more. Therefore, by your answer, it wasn't necessary anymore for those who were stationed to be moving, correct? They would stay they, in their position. They are the one who apprehended him. Yes, but they would remain in their positions and that file was carried away by other soldiers, correct? No, they are the one who, uh, who we are beating him and they brought him. The evidence we have is that it, it was, in fact, the orderlies who did the beating. No, for me, I have never, never, never. Uh, no. I'm not talking about you for the moment. Right. Let's talk about the other orderlies. The other orderlies did the beating. Yes, sir. You were an orderly. Yes, sir. Did you participate in the beating? Never. So you were the sole orderly who stood aside and did not participate in the beating? We are in the different, different, after we are in different areas. I don't touch anybody there that day. But of course, you would say that, wouldn't you? Collectively, they will say at least. So I will not be. But you want from to me. exclude yourself. That's why I say I will not be exempted from that. It's at least they will mention at least. I want to get it clear. Yes, sir. Would you be exempted, or would you not be exempted? It's collectively. So you are equally responsible, correct? Yes, sir. So you accept that responsibility? Yes, sir. Is that it is you, the orderlies, who collectively beat Dot Fall? Yes, sir. It's uniform. Was he also beaten mercilessly? He was beaten. Mercilessly or not? It's mercilessly. And what happened to him after that? Um, after that, uh, I can't remember what happened to him. Was he also put in the cell or not? The only person I know he, wo he, he was put in the cell is uh, left number zero barrel. But you couldn't tell after the beating of Dotfal what happened to him? Yes, sir. After that, you told us Sana ordered that you move to where? Fajara Barracks. And how did you go to Fajara Barracks? Um, during that process, he le uh, le uh, leave this man, left this man there, Malafi Corps, in charge of the camp in Dome Barracks with some men. Then we left to for Fajara Barracks. Um, how about the council members? Did they all go to Fajara Barracks or not? All of them. We went with all of them. So tell us who led the way to Fajara Barracks? Sameh Sabal is the senior council member. He is the one who led the way. And uh, you all went with him, right? Yes, sir. Uh, tell us what happened when you arrived at Fajara Barracks. Um, when you arrived at Fajara Barracks at the back gate, then we started receiving shots. They were firing at us. 
And then we fired back. Then we enter the barracks. Um, some of the soldiers were throwing their weapons, removing uniforms. Um, during that process, uh, we where some of these young soldiers, these pri private soldiers and so on, uh, we told them to come on board and join us at the back. Some of the soldiers. Then they accepted, they joined us. Um, but for the senior officers or senior NGOs, we don't do that. What would you do? Um, some of them were arrested. And then what happened after that? After that, for a couple of some hours, um, Sana paraded uh, some of the captured soldiers at the football field. Then he ordered us to shoot at them. And what happened? We responded, shot. All of you shot at the detainee, at the captured soldiers? Yes, sir. And, and uh, what was the consequence of that shooting? Um, what I have uh, observed was two soldiers has fallen down. And, uh, and what happened to the rest? The rest were running ex the exit. After that shooting, what happened? After the shooting? Um, uh, perhaps let me take you a step backwards. Okay, sir. You said all of you responded to Sana's command and you fired at the captured soldiers, yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. By all of you, you mean everybody that was present respected the order and fired? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. At this time, where was Yankuba Ture? Yankuba Ture was there. He was in the line amongst all, all of the them soldiers. were in the line firing. All of them were firing? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. And yourself, you were also firing? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. And uh, two soldiers fell. Yes, sir. Do you recall who these two soldiers were? No, sir, because I don't go to, towards them. There. And what happened to those two soldiers? I did not know. Uh, did, were they left behind or were they taken away? Well, we left they were lying there, so maybe after they were taken away. So you don't know whether they were take, taken away or not? No, sir. From there, what happened next? From there, we went back to Yundum Barracks. When we, reach at, uh, when we arrived at Yundum Barracks, we stood in front of the garden there. Uh, this man was brought in, um, Sergeant... Sergeant Fafa Nyang was brought in by Kopul Kanyi and Boop. With Kopul Kanyi are you referring to? Um, I think uh, we call him Alaji, Alaji, Alaji Kanyi. And who else? Babukar Mboop. What was Babukar Mboop's rank? Uh, he was, a, if I may call, he was a last couple. And uh, they brought out Fafanyang. And yes, can sir. you tell, can you show us how Fafanyang was being brought out, the, the way he was treated? Can you show us? I we want know. to appreciate, we want to have a good understanding how Fafanyang was handled when he was being taken out. Can I get up and go, sir? By all means. Okay, sir. Um, that was, we predict that this is the Mic Microphone, yes. Uh-huh. Speak through the they microphone. They, this was the guard room here. And then there is rooms, uh, houses there around there. So we were standing here. He was dragged. Both of them were handled here, on handled there. They were pulling him. Then he was saying, Bilai wa I am not a monk. That was the word that he was saying. But um, Sana Sabali ordered them, go and shoot him. So they dragged him up to the ante room area, towards the guard room. Then fire. As, sit down, sit down now. As far as <coughs> you know, as far as you can recall, yes, who, who fired? Um, the person who fired, um, I cannot tell. 
that moment because we were at the main guard room. He was dragged going towards the ante room to the cookhouse. Then automatic uh, automatic fire. Was he shot only once through that automatic fire, or or did was he fired at afterwards? He was shot that time. It was only one. Parr. And then what happened? They said he was killed, and we know he, the, the order that Sana Samuel has given has been executed. Did, as far as you know, did somebody else, apart from that one burst of rounds on him, did somebody else fire at Fafanyan? Yes, sir. Tell us about it. After that, we went, all of us rushed to that area. What I observed was uh, the rounds went by the stomach like this. Yes. So the intestine was out. While he was struggling, um, uh, this uh, man, Koli, Koli fired. You saw that happening? Yes, sir. Can you demonstrate to us what you saw Koli did? When we, uh, when, when we reached there, yes, he was struggling there. Intestine was out. Then Collie just emerged from uh, where I don't know where at the American area. Just emerged and found he was struggling like this. Then he shot. Let's take a seat, please. Let's take it step by step. Did you see him take out his gun, Collie? He shot him. Yes, Did you see him aim or point his gun at the victim, Fafanyang? What I could say is that he shot him on the head. He aimed and shot him on the head. He aimed and shot him on the head. On the head. What would you say if I were to propose to you that that shooting was accidental? Well, a, a well-trained military officer telling people that that is an accidental is not true. Because each rifle has a safety catch. And how can that be an accident and then hit the head? Hit the, head? the proposition that that was an accident is a fallacy, isn't it? I think so. uh, yes, sir. As far as you know, a person present at the scene, did Koli deliberately shoot at Fafanyan? He shot at him. Deliberately? Yes, sir. That's your testimony? Yes, sir. Let's move on. After Fafanyan was shot, what happened next? After when Fafanyan was shot, um, uh, uh, they said um, dot fall the view, the truck came, the truck came, truck where dot fall body was in the truck was was it only dot fall's body that was in the truck? Well, um, they were saying that the dot fall body was in the truck because I don't go in to check whose body was there, but they were saying dot fall, dot fall. After that, what happened? After that, um, Shana ordered them to go and bury them. Were you present when the burial took place? I was there observing, yeah. Who did the burial? Um, at that moment, I cannot tell you the people who did the burial. The evidence we received mm -hmm. is that it was the orderlies who did the burial. Um, but I didn't do it at all because I was, I was there. Did was the there. orderlies participate in the burial? That one I couldn't remember. To be frank with you, I can't remember. Is that just convenient? 
Yes, sir. I cannot remember who did that burial because though we, even the burial was not finished, then we left. We left before the burial, completion of the burial. The evidence is that Sana Sabali identified the location for the burial and it was you, the orderlies, who actually carried out the burial. I personally, I don't do any burial, never. Do you know whether any oddly participated in the burial? I, I wouldn't I, ask you for names for now. I know, I know that uh, people participated in the burial. But Which to remember, people? To, to remember that the, the oddlies, that one is, I, I can't remember, I can't remember, I can't remember. I can't remember, because uh, what the problem was, uh, the, 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 the man who was killed, um, it's my immediate boss. Who? Fafa Nyang. Tell us about your relationship. Yes, uh, he is my sexual commander in the training school in 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 Farafeni. And uh, I was doing everything for him, writing, copying, and so on. And he chose me to be one of the best recruits during our training. So he was my immediate boss so when he was killed i felt it i felt it i felt it is that a reason why you did not participate in the burial never i even cried that day no can you tell us who participated in the burial you are not many yeah, is, that, that place was full of soldiers uh, who came to work that day, normal working hours. The, the place was full of people. But you want to tell us that one BN soldiers participated in those events? All of us were there with them. But being there and participating are different, isn't it? For the burial, I cannot tell who did. I forgot that. I cannot tell. But uh, the time of the uh, killing, we were there dragging him. We were there. All people were, people were just observing what, is, what was going on. All right. Uh, from there, you left. Yes, sir. Where did you go? We went straight to st State House. And tell us what happened at State House. Uh, when we reached at State House, all the council members left, went up. Yes. Yes. We are on the ground. And what were you, those on the ground, doing? We were there, they came and served us with uh, drinks. What kind of drinks? It's canned drinks. Alcohol? No, no, no. I don't, I don't drink alcohol. You were celebrating? Uh, well, when the Ayami came down, some soldiers were celebrating, yes. Can you show us how were they celebrating? They were jumping. Jubilating? Jubilating, yes. That they have just killed their friend, their so colleagues, they foiled, the, foiled, their brothers? They foiled a coup. But they just killed their brothers, and their colleagues in the army, yes, sir. and they were celebrating. And there was no fighting during which these people were killed. There was no fighting. The only shooting was at that uh, Fajara barracks, and there was no death. Nobody was dead. How did you feel when you and your colleagues? We are jubilating and celebrating the brutal slaughter of your I, colleagues. I, I personally was not celebrating. State House, you have just short fence. I was sitting there drinking my uh, drinking my soft drink. I even spoke to one of our colleagues. I told him, these people, they don't know what they are celebrating. Yeah. What they are what? Celebrating for. They are jubilating for. What happened after that? Um, after that, we were there until uh, all the council members requested for us to go to individual homes. Then we left with young Botuwe. Where did you go? We went straight to his house, his home, residence. And what happened after that? When he reached there, I was there for a couple of minutes after he called me, he told me, Mendy, you can go home and, and, and relax and rest. 
and that's where I packed up my bag and I went home. And you left him there alone? The other security, the, the other only are there with the... The other what? The other oddly. Which other oddly? It's Jalimusa, because I supposed to go uh, go on off on the tent, but there was no possibility for me to go. Then Jalimusa was there with the other security. Your testimony is that you left Yankubature there with Jalimusa and the other 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 security. security. That's your testimony. Security is there. Yes. Securities were there. That's your testimony. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you say to the suggestion so, um, that in fact you did not go home you stayed with Yankubature and you returned to Yindum Barracks no, sir. collected soldiers who were arrested captured and detained took them to the forest and executed them what do you say to that? Never, I have never participated in such I have never gone there. I went home. Uh, remember, Mr. Witness, this is a critical moment. Yes, sir. This matter is still being investigated. Yes, sir. The evidence we've received so far yes, sir. is that you were present in that forest when soldiers were executed. You deny participation. Never, sir. I have never been there. You have been warned before. I know. When next did you return to work to, with Yanku Bature? It was on a Tuesday. You were not there on Saturday? Saturday I, 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 I left. When did you leave? It was on Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon? Yes, sir. That's when you left? Yes, sir. What time did you leave? I left around 3 to 4. But three to four on Saturday. That is, that is when we le came from uh, State House. But three to four on Saturday, the council members were in C4 Forest executing those soldiers who were captured. Never, I was not there. Never. Well, the matter is being investigated. Yes, sir. And okay. the commissioners would make their finding on the issue. Yes, sir. Um, we, I just can only go by what you say. Yes, sir. You say you were not there. I was not there. I was at home. You are on the oath. Yes, sir. Okay. So, but you left Jelly Musa Suso with Yankuba Ture as yes. his only Jelly Musa, orderly Jelly that Musa time. So. Jelly Musa So. Jelly Musa So. With soldiers All right. guarding the compound. So you said you returned to work Tuesday. on Tuesday. Yes, sir. Did you hear the announcement that was made by members of the council, members of the junta? Yes, I was relaxing in my veranda. I, I have a radio. That announcement was in the evening. I heard it. What did the announcement say? Um, the announcement was that uh, there was a crew Coup d'état that was taking uh, that ha was taking place, but it has been foiled, and soldiers died during skirmishing. Was that announcement true? It's false. It's you true. knew at the time also that the announcement was false. Yes, I told even my friends. I told them these people are lying. It's not true. In fact, those soldiers were killed by you and others at Fajara barracks. Soldiers who died, they are, they are only two. Those two were killed by you and your group at Fajala Barracks? Yes, sir. And Fafanyang, of course, was killed by Koli and some other person you could not tell? Yes, sir. But where was your home at this time? Who, me? Yes. Recover. You say, did you just say that you went home at Yundum? No, I'm not staying in Yundum. At this from time... From the compound, I left from the camp. Uh, thank you very much. All right. So, after the events of November 11,
Yes, sir. Did you remain with young Kuba Ture? I was with him. In June of 1995 or thereabout, were you still with him? Yes, sir. Do you recall where his residence was located at this time? Um, at uh, those days, he, he was staying at Kirshire. Your relationship with him at this time, was it still that you, was it still true that you were serving as his orderly? Yes, sir. The same personnel remained? It's only after that um, this man came, uh, Jali Musaso left, and then the Sambaba came in. This Sambaba, is he the same person as Bach Samba? Okay, this is Sambaba, not Bach Samba Java. No, sir. Okay, wonderful. During this period, did you have occasion to learn about an event that took place at Yankuba Ture's house? Um, is after then I had. Did you have occasion to be walking on Yankuba Ture's house when you were asked to do something that was unusual? Yes, sir. Kindly tell us about it. Yes, sir. Um, it was, uh, I couldn't remember the date, but um, that day, the chairman Jame was to travel to AU Summit, Ethiopia. So, automatically, there should be a guard of honor. So, after taking our lunch, we prepared and then went to State House. The usual procedure that they used to do is to join him with the convoy to the airport. So, when we reached at the State House, we were there for almost one hour, and then they came down, the council members came down, and then young, what we, I was there uh, with the driver, waiting for him to come and board our vehicle so that we can join the orders to go to the airport. But when he came down, he told me, Mendy, you can go home with the driver, I will join one of my council members. Was that usual? Never. And what happened after that? Then after that, I went home with the driver. He dropped me there because I was on duty. I supposed not to go home. Then the driver went home with the vehicle. What happened after that? And then at night, um, young Bature called me. He said, Mendy, um, I heard that there is a threat around Senegal area, BB, BB area and Senegal area. So I want you to uh, tell the guard commander and you move with him and go on patrol around those areas. Then I went to see the guard commander who is a uh, couple Ngom. By then he's a couple, couple Ngom, but presently I think he's the military police commander. I don't know. So Would that be Amat Jangom? Jangom, yes, sir. So I went, I talked to him, then he agreed, then we, we left with food. And uh, how many of you left? Um, normally guards, they are, they, they're supposed to be five, five plus, plus me, that's six. At this stage, where was young Kuba's family? Um, uh, his family, uh, what I can tell is that well, upon our return, I don't meet anybody there. There is nobody in the compound. Do you know where they went? Um, later in the day, I know that they went to the wife's compound at Banjo. That is what you believe? I, yes, sir. But did young Kuba discuss the issue of his family with you when he ordered you to go on patrol? Never. How about the mates? The mate 
Um, uh, her too, I asked her, I said she was asked to move, and then there's other mates in other nearby compounds. She went there. When you were leaving the house, do you recall whether there was anybody left in the house? Yes, that's why I, I told you. Because when we were leaving, we left before the wife left. That is what you think? Yes, sir. Your testimony is that you left with who? Tell us the persons you left with. I left with the uh, couple Jangom, the guard commander, and plus his men. And tell us how you how you left the house and where you went. Um, we, 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 we left the house. Went, we walked up to this Palamirima Junction here. Then we went through this, up to where uh, the vice president was, Assassin Jai Shady, to observe these uh, ships that uh, young boy said they are there, there is a threat and so on. I want you to cast your mind back yes, sir. to this event because this is very important. Yes, sir. How were you dressed when you were going? Uh, during those days, uh, that is a transition, I used to, we used to put on the uniform. All of us were on the, in the uniform. And well, how about your weapons? Yes. You cannot move without a weapon. You went on patrol. The question is, did you carry your weapon with you? Yes, sir. And how about the older soldiers who were with you? Did they carry their weapons with uh, you? Yes. Is their personal wife? Yes. They have to carry. And your testimony is that you walked from Yankuba's house to Palmarima? Via the beach side. Via the beach side. When? At what point did you enter the beach? through Palmerima the, the, uh, at the beach side. And how many of you? Six of us. You said including Corporal Jangom. Jangom is the number f uh, five, then I, then the sixth person. Uh, uh, Mr. Witness. Yes, sir. Would it surprise you to note yes, sir. that Corporal Jangom yes, gave a completely different testimony? Yeah, that would be a big surprise. Mr. Jangom said yes, sir. he went with only three, with only two people, himself and two others. How I, I, we went together, I was the one contacting Yanko Bature uh, while we are on patrol. Mr. How did you contact Yanko Bature? I have a communication. What kind of communication? It's a, a big a big, uh, somehow a big one. I don't understand that. Could you say it again? I say it's sort of a mobile, but uh, it's big. It's a big one. Was it a mobile phone or was it not a mobile phone? And they were using, it was a sort of a mobile. It's a mobile. Uh, where did you get that device from? I got it from uh, Baharin Jai. I followed him to help me with the mobile. It's uh, analog. So it was an analog mobile phone? Yeah, monthly bill. Monthly bill. And who was paying the bill? I was paying it. And how much were you paying? Um, I told them when it reaches at 400, let them cut it off, then I pay the bill. Mr. Witness, this was in 1995. You want to tell me that as a private soldier in 1995, you had a mobile phone and you were paying four hundred dollars yes, a month. Yes, sir. It's a Nokia, small Nokia. It's a Nokia one, Nokia. You was it a small Nokia? You have small battery. If you oh. use, if you use a small battery, it is just like a flat one. And then if you use the big battery, it goes like this. I I I know those types. Of yes, phones. sir. How much was your salary at this stage as a private soldier? Uh, my salary was uh, thousand, almost thousand two something. And you were spending four hundred dollars on a mobile phone, during monthly those, bills. During those days, we have the privilege sometimes to travel with the ministers. We travel with them. So you were paying. Adiam. That aside, you are paying $400 out of your 
salary of 1,200 on a mobile phone. That's what you were telling us. I told them when it reached at 400, but it doesn't exist that place. That was the estimate I told them to cut it off when it reached there. Now it's clear. Jangom said he did not go with you. I went with him. He said he did not go with you. He is denying the fact. Jangom said mm -hmm. he went with only two people. You are saying you went, it was six of you. How, how, how? I was communicating with Yanguba. We want to come because I called him and tell him what the mission you gave us. We didn't see anything there. We want to come back. He said, no, stay there and wait for me, wait for my orders. Jangom said they did not communicate with Yankuba. They walked from the beach to the house and spoke to somebody in the house, Captain Edward Singate. They did not call Yankuba. They could not call Yankuba because they had no mobile phone. That is not true. I was mobile. I have my mobile. I called Yankuba because he told me, go there until when I call you. But we were there. The place was too cool. So I decided to call him, telling him that the mission you have sent us, we haven't seen anything, so we are coming back. Then he said, no, stay there and wait for me. Apart, apart from the cold, what was the weather like that day? This was windy. Only windy? Windy, the, the, the sea was rough. Jangom said it was a rainy day. It was raining. They had to leave. No, 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 no. Because uh, it, uh, that one was not rain. It's just, uh, how, would I, how would I call it? It was not raining like that, no. It was drizzling. Not, not that type of rain, you mean, no. Uh, we Mr. are not Wit wet, we are not wet. Mr. Witness, yes, sir. is it just possible that you guys went in separate groups? That one I cannot remember, but I know we went together. So in fact, you therefore cannot remember how many of you went together. Because if you cannot recall whether you we went in, in group. We don't go in group. If you cannot recall whether these six people stayed together throughout, then you obviously cannot tell whether it was six people who went. What I know is that all the guards and I were vacated from the compound. But you do not now recall who was with you. Who? Which of the guards was with the you? The one I remember was, you told me, I told you, the guard commander is the right person to name those people. Because they change every week. Every week changes. But the guard commander said they did not go in uniform. They went in mufti. Where did they get the mufti? In fact, the guard commander said, you lent him a track suit, which he wore. To me? Yes. Oh, to my surprise. Let him name those soldiers whom you know we went with, and then the qualification will be there. Do you know a person called Lamin, excuse me, Abdullahi Dabo, Tuluba? No. The Tuluba I know... Abdullahi Bojang, sorry, Tuluba. The, the, the Tuluba I know is Lamin Bojang. Yes, Lamin Bojang Tuluba. Yes, sir. When was the last time you saw him? We are in the army. Yes. Um, it's my bad mate. We left together. And of course, if you were with him in an operation, you would not forget that, would you? Who lie? Tuluba Bojang. Yeah, yeah, yes. Last time I mentioned his, I say maybe a lie was there, but I, it was, I was not sure whether a lie was there. This was your badge, mate? Yes, sir. Really? He belongs to a different unit? Yes, sir, a different You unit. guys participated in an operation like that, and you cannot recall? This was, this was an unusual operation. And that is all the more reason why you should remember who was present. I remember the guard commander, so I don't want to involve myself in naming somebody whom you know. Yeah, but uh, even yeah. your colleague, the person who is your batchmate, you trained with him. You could not even recall whether he was there. Yeah. That's strange, isn't it?
I could not remember. That's strange, isn't it? I'll leave the point. Yes, sir. You went back to Yankuba Ture's house that night, did you? He called us. He called me, telling me, telling us to return back. Did you return? Yes, sir. And tell us what happened, um, what you saw when you returned. Uh, upon our arrival there, I went inside. The guard, In, inside where? Uh, the corridor. Then the guard. Could you say that again? I missed that. Inside corridor, where? The corridor. The no. corridor yes, sir. of the house, right? Yes sir. yes, sir. And tell us what happened. And we went through via the where the guards are. The where the car park they use it as their guard room. So you just have, you have the gate, the door here, and then you enter. Then when I enter, I saw different thing in the house. Tell us what you saw. I saw water, mud. All the, the house was scattered. You mean messy or you mean scattered? It's messy. All things were not in order. It, so you when said when I was leaving, the house was not like that. When you were leaving, how was it? The house was clean, neat. You know. Clean and neat. Those yes. were your words. Yes, but when you went back this time, it was messy. It's different. It was different. What was different? Um, it was dirty. Water. You have water. All dirt there. But I stood for almost one minute observing. And you saw water? Yes. How much water? Um, it's minimal. Just ordinary water. Muddy place, like wet place. You saw mud? Yeah. Was the house clean at this time or was it unclean? It's unclean. What else did you see? From there I observed, I saw uh, Uncle Batuwe's uniform, that is uh, the green fatic. Did you, when was I the saw him himself. He yes. alone was walking. Ye yes, we will come to that. You said you saw green fatigues. Uh, what does fatigue mean? That is the green uniform with short hand. Did you see that green uniform on that day before that time? I saw it on that day and in the morning again. How did you see it? It was well before the city room. Place in there. No, what I'm saying is, earlier that day, did you see that green uniform at all? Yes, sir. How did you see it? I saw some bonds. We will come to that. Okay. Did you, do you know whether that green uniform had been used that day? That was the uniform that he was using that day. What do you mean by that? Explain further. Council members, during the transition period, put on uniform. They don't put on civilian clothes. So tell me about that uniform that day. Was it used? Yes. Who used it? It was young Boture who was using that uniform. When was he using it? That day, on the 10th. Uh, sorry, I am misusing the time. Of that. Uh, that the day that we were going for the guard of honor, that was the uniform he was putting on. So you mean that okay, while you were at State House, what uniform was he wearing? Green fatigue. Is it the same green fatigue you saw? The same green fatigue. So when you were leaving the house, did yes. you see that same green fatigue lying anywhere in the room? In the morning? Yes. Yes, sir. At the corner. No, what I mean is, that day, before, oh, before you were ordered house. to go, did you see those green fatigues in the house? You were ordered to go to... Patrol? But no, no, no. He, he was not in... So you suggesting he was wearing those green fatigues? That's what he wore when he went to the airport. That was the uniform he was using. So when you came back to the house, you see water and mud in the house. The house was messy. Yes, sir. And was different from the way it was when you left. Yes, sir. And that was the time you saw the green fatigues. Yes, sir. Can you tell us what you saw? What that is remarkable about that green fatigue? I saw uh, two born places here. Yeah. Born, yeah, it's two dots. Explain that. Two what? 
uh, something that we are burned by fire. I don't know fire. It's two dots here. So you two marks. you saw two burnt marks on the uniform. Yes, sir. At which stand up and show us which part of the uniform. It's just here. Were these bones there before that day? Never, never. A minister will, uh, uh, a of state will never put on such a uniform. What else did you see on the uniform? That's it. That's it. What, what, what was the condition of the uniform apart from the burnt marks? The uniform was dirty. And what else? Wet, somehow muddy. Wet. Wet. Was that normal? Never. When you saw the condition in the house and you saw the uniform, did you see think that was okay? Um, the moment I enter, I just step in, then I saw a different I saw different things. So I, I said oh that something must be wrong. Yeah. You did you see Yankuk? Yes. He was coming from the city room, going towards his, his room. And what was he doing? He was with a uh, short, 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 I don't know whether we call it tight, this tight, with small, uh, entering his, uh, his room. Uh, tell us what you observed about him when you saw him. What um, was he doing? What I observed about him, uh, he was somehow in a different mood different mood like what well uh, yes, sir. and was he stationary when you see when you saw him or not no 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 no. tell us what he was doing show us uh, the moment uh, when he had was coming in he was just coming from the city room going towards his room but he never talked to me he went in then i stood i went some steps i st went up to where those uniforms are i stood there one minute then it was too late, and then I opened my door and then went inside. Thank you, Hareja. When you saw him that instant he entered the room, did he walk back out or um, not? That one I could not tell because I returned back then opened my room then sleep because I was dizzy, feeling sleep. When you saw his condition, you said he looked worried. When you looked at the house, it was messy. Yes, sir. You saw his uniform. It has burnt marks. It had mud. It was wet. What came to your mind? Uh, what came to my mind? I suspected that something must be uh, something must have happened here, but I cannot tell at the moment. I don't know. Then Did my mind went that why are we sent out from the compound? Yeah, I think I said maybe there's something that happened. You became suspicious. Yes, sir. That something must have happened. Yes, sir. In that house. Yes, sir. What happened the next day? Um, the next day we left. We know normally we used to wake up very early. I take bath. You take bath, and then we went to office. So when we reached the office, then we heard that Korosise has been murdered. Who was Korosise? He was the Minister of Finance. I know How did you feel or what did you think when you had that information? Uh, when I had that information, my, man, my mind went back. To what? Night, uh, to his compound that night. My mind, my mind went back to what happened there. Why did your mind have to go back to what happened there? Uh, well, through my observance, and uh, to my intelligence, because uh, they said the car was burnt. I didn't get that. They said the car was burnt. Yes. Yes. And there is a burnt in his uniform. I started thinking, I was thinking, I was using my intelligence also to think that there is a foul play. Foul play by who? Uh, well, I could say is Yanko Botule because it is his compound. So I don't know how he managed to allow such to happen in the, in the house. If at all he is not among. You suspected yes, sir. that Yanko Botule participated 
in the mother of Usman Kurosi, sir? Yes, sir, because it is compound. If that have happened to be there, happened to that place, who allow it to, to happen? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. It's <coughs> after 4 p.m. I would want to leave it at that, and commissioners may ask questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Council, and uh, thank you, Mr. Mendy, uh, for your testimony. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions? The first. Uh, Commissioner Kinte, you have the floor, please. Hello, uh, Mendy. This is yes, Commissioner sir. Kinde. I remember you said um, Basiru Baro was captured at Yundum. Yes, sir. And locked up in the cell. Yes, sir. Later, um, that file was captured. Yes, sir. But you didn't know what happened to that that file at the time. Like. Uh, you said you did not know what happened to him because you said you did not know whether he was also locked up. No, no, I did not say that. Okay. He said mm -hmm. Basiru Baro was locked up. Mm -hmm. He does not know what happened to that file. Exactly. He knows he was beaten. Yeah, that's what I... Uh, yes. yes. You, Mr. Commissioner, in fairness mm -hmm. to the witness, you put it in the reverse. Okay. Uh, he knows what happened to Basiru Baro. He was beaten and locked up. With regards to dot file, he knows he was beaten, but he doesn't know whether he was locked up. That okay. was the testimony, correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and later you said that was, it was after that you went to Fajar Barracks? Yes, sir. And then you shot at a group of soldiers. Two of them fell down and the rest escaped. Yes, sir. Uh, up to now, you could not tell which were the, who were those two soldiers. Those who fell down. Yes, at the barracks. No, sir. I don't. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Im Im Imam Jalo. Yes. On your way to Yunu. Yes, sir. You said you saw a soldier running towards you. Yes, sir. You stopped him. What happened to him? It's um, Sana Sabal who stopped him. Question, they were questioning him, but uh, at that moment I was not uh, close to them. But uh, what I know is that that soldier was, they left him and he went. I think they were just seeking information what is going on in the barracks there. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. If there are no further questions, um, uh, do you have any closing remarks um, to make, Mr. Mendy? Yes, sir. Oh, sir. <laughs> well, well uh, uh, I defer to the chair. Uh, perhaps uh, it's not every witness who, who, is, who should be granted that courtesy. There is every likelihood that this witness may come back. Uh, but I leave it in, in your capable hands, Mr. Chair. Uh, no, with that guidance, um, indeed, which I'm, I wasn't aware of, I think it's my um, best um, that hold your closing remarks for the moment. When we come back and uh, the right moment, we would give the floor to do that. All right. Much obliged, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mr. Mendy, for um, uh, coming. Uh, before we close, uh, just to remind you that Today is the last day of uh, the third session of uh, these public hearings. We will resume public hearings on the 8th of April. And uh, in the meantime, there are lots of internal things that the Commission um, uh, deals with and uh, visits some of that we would undertake as well. So uh, we will see you all on the 8th of April, Monday, 10 o'clock uh, sharp. That would be the beginning of the fourth of the session. You will recall that uh, uh, the first session was convened from the 7th to the 31st of January. The second session from the 11th to the 28th of uh, February. And the third that we are ending today started on the 11th of March and is ending today. So the fourth one we would start on the 8th of April, going on until the 25th of April.
If there are no further points to be made, we will close the session and close the meeting. And thank you all very much indeed. Meeting is adjourned. Lanni Maro Lanni Pop Lanni Eh awa jodi mi anda hono gerde ten en galdo sabu en galdo Ibrahim journal taw Joni mi anda se yahay kapit ki nyawlo den ha hum pondire mako esko non ne waru Ah wadde no Ane ko de Ibrahim mama ko to woni mi mo Amerika Ah ko Amerika woni Eh kere hum pita ki fi be musibe men balu balu o Mbe anda nda kala kuwa da wande aduno si arivi e jude mape a jona e do depas maong gambia har no wet aya ataka di tau kumbudi di no jawi wala no jipi e halan tama ko kala ko fal da kure ise sengo nyame te ili nepa maro <hesitation> basal wom de te kala ko revi dong a hendo to har no wet kadi wana dun dun tu be a be joni rai mobile phone si ko dun kadi laptop kala ko wairo di di ba ai kas bawa Te wa uma junu te, <hesitation> kadi sa vala um pita te ko webi, <hesitation> ke tu ko gula ka ma um juni nda ta tong, wa ta download app ma pe um aye kala ko um pi ma e ma pe tong, te webi ya ma, ka won ta woi aduna um, kala ko wa wa ta ajon na na e won to kala e di me ngambia do depansi, kara no webi ya ma, si du no vono nebi, <hesitation> kimo den juni mi do ta ma ka plas ma pe njan, wa den juni, iya he.